Alright, so welcome back to the PaleoCast Gaming Network. Today, we're looking at a game called Fossil Corner. This has literally just come out this week. A bunch of people sent it to me, and it looks really cool. So in this game, we play as a retired paleontologist sorting their fossil collection and answering emails, thereby making it probably the most realistic game we've ever looked at. Like, that's basically my job description at this point. There are loads and loads of games about collecting fossils and, you know, doing field work, and obviously that's a lot of fun, but there are very few games about actually working out how fossils are related to each other uh, by their morphology, which is really the bulk of what we do, so it's really neat that there's a game about this. So let's go through this. Each box contains a family tree of fossils. For the grandchildren, children, and parents, so each fossil has a colour, the colour shows how old uh, the fossil is. The oldest fossils are on the bottom and the descendants are higher up. Well, that actually makes complete sense. I mean, usually in paleontology, we very rarely know the exact age of a fossil we're working on. Instead, we know the relative age. So like, you know, this is older than this, this is younger than this, uh, and so on. And we know that by looking at where the fossil uh, came from in the sediment, which I guess is kind of what these uh, coloured bands are meant to represent. Like, this is kind of the lowest layer of sediment, and then you've got layers going upwards, getting younger as you go up, which, again, it just makes sense. Between each generation, just one trait changes between a parent and a child. For the purposes of this game, again, that just makes complete sense. And when you get the boxes, the family trees are all scrambled up. Your job is to unscramble the family tree. Yep, absolutely. That's just so brilliant. Uh, try dragging the fossils by colour. Drag and drop the fossils into the right row. So I guess we got to just put them in the order of their age. Um, oh, one sec. Um, so I'm colourblind. <laughs> um... Please tell me there's a colorblind setting. There is a colorblind setting. Oh my god. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, that's a really good way of doing it. Phew! I thought, I thought the video was going to be over very quickly there. Uh, thank you, game developer, for including that, because, yeah, being a colorblind paleontologist really sucks. Okay, so again, we are following their relationships based on one change in morphology. Okay, these are our traits over here. Perfect. So we've got the aperture, that is of course the opening in the shell. So we've got like a sort of oval shape, a triangular shape, and a rectangular shape. And then we've got the shape of the shell, so here it's kind of the depth, you've got this more sort of coiled, more like a uh, snail shell I guess, and then this more flatter shell which looks much more like an ammonite. So it's a bit strange, but again, it just works for the purposes of how this game works I guess. And then you've got size, and at first I was going to say that like, oh, size isn't really a good character to use potentially because, I mean, there are a lot of instances where uh, we've thought that two different specimens were different species, but it turns out that one is just a younger version of the other. you got an adult and a juvenile. Um, but I guess really for like these kinds of creatures, these shells, it actually doesn't matter because you can just count the growth lines, so it should be fine. I actually don't really work on, on shells like mollusks and gastropods. I, I work with um, fossil fishes, so this is a little bit different to what I work on, but it's basically the same principle. So for example, we're going to start with this one. This is obviously, there's only one at this age, so this one must be the root, and these are its descendants, which means that what we've got here is what we would call a clade. We've got the root here, and then these two are basically sisters, the sister taxon, siblings, and they both share this common ancestor, and that is just the foundational idea of everything that we're going to do in this game. And then next, I guess, well, this one's getting slightly shorter, so that one must be related to this one, and then this one has changed the aperture again, so that's kind of the, the trajectory that both of these are going down. This one is getting a different aperture opening, and oh, we found the endpoint. Okay, so that one, this one is the final branch for this, uh, for this lineage, I guess, and nothing is further descended from this, which, well, I guess must mean that all three of these are descended from this one. Yeah, that would make sense. That one's getting shorter, that one's... Uh, got the triangular aperture, and this one's got the circular aperture. Okay, you solved it. Fantastic. However, I guess really in paleontology, we would um, we would consider this a polytomy where it's split into three. Ideally, you would want it in that kind of triangular uh, arrangement that I showed you earlier. This we we would work really hard to try and solve that, and you know resolve that further with be it new specimens or um, new traits or something like that. Uh, oh, and then we can pick a fossil to keep. I quite like this one. It's quite cool. Okay, uh, yeah, and basically you just sit and keep ordering more and more fossils, which, ah, the dream. Oh, these look really pretty. 
these ones. Ooh, look at that one. Whoa. Oh, there we go. Okay, this idea. Wait, hang on. So those two are endpoints, which means everything is ascended over here. So yeah, that one's gotten slightly bigger. And then this one is just gorgeous. Okay, so that one's related to that one, that one, and that one there. So it's quite neat. I mean, you can kind of. Oh, <laughs> surprises me every time. Um, it's kind of neat how you can sort of spot um, these sort of reoccurring trends in the in the way that they evolve. So like, for example, uh, both this one, this one, and this one all descended from uh, this one. But they've converged on the on the round uh, opening. That's quite cool, isn't it? I really want to keep that one. Obviously, look at it. It's amazing. Wow. So as you can see, you can just keep buying various shelves of various fanciness, and um, yeah, if you're really into that side of things, you can just have like, a huge collection of all the different shelves that you find, which I I really like. You know, I was saying at the start how much I love um, field work, and yet really, this is the bulk of what we do. Um, you know, it's really, I, I really miss field work. It's obviously so exciting knowing that there are so many species out there just waiting to be discovered. But in my research, really, we do this to fossils that have kind of already gone through this process, if that makes sense, like 50 or 60 years ago. And rather than looking at new fossils, I look at older fossils and try to reassess them using a more modern standard of doing this. So you've got our little traits over here. Actually, we've got a new trait. This is a pattern trait, which is a little bit more complicated, but I think we'll I think we'll manage. Yeah, a lot of the time, fossils from the olden days, I say that and I mean like the 60s and 70s, are really poorly described. They will use very weirdly written traits, and they're just generally not described to the same I guess like rigor that oh what have I done there? Is that another oh it's changed pattern and it's changed height, so really it must be descended from this one, because that's only a change of pattern. Hooray! And yeah, by doing that work, um we will keep I quite like this one. That's very pretty. Nice. Oh, was I didn't miss that? Did it just say that you can um you can sell the fossils. I think I said recycle them, but still, I was hoping that this game wouldn't have that trope, but um, here we are, I guess. Oh yeah, we've got various emails as well. Um, I'm back in the game. But you're back in the fossil hunting game. I knew you couldn't stay away for long. Um, oh, we're being offered a little side quest to do some photography. Um, oh yeah, fantastic. Okay, that's quite cool. Whoa, this one's huge. Jesus. Ooh, this time we have a koala shell. Is that this one? Ooh, so we don't know how old this one is. Ah, so we've got to try and work out where that's going to fit in. That's really cool. Okay, maybe this game's a bit more complicated than I um, that I gave it credit for. Maybe we're going to have... Wait. Oh, well, that's pretty easy. This one must go here, presumably. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, uh, 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 there we go. <laughs> that dog barking is in the game. That is not diegetic sound. <laughs> That's great. Um, what on earth was I saying? Oh yeah. Um, so basically, in the work that I do, our mission is to basically find new tra. Oh my god, that dog is really annoying, isn't it? How can I? Hang on. Can I just like? How do I? Oh, it is closed. Ah. Flip heck. <laughs> um, what on earth was I trying to say? My research involves trying to do this, but with new traits. Because if we find new traits, well, the more traits the, that you have in your analysis, the more complicated you can be, and you can sort of resolve those weird, fiddly situations that I was showing you earlier. We even have the technology uh, nowadays to look inside our fossils, which is amazingly cool. So, I mean, you wouldn't really do it on things like this, but for things like, you know, early vertebrates, things like fishes and uh, reptiles and birds and things like that, it's an extremely useful and extremely powerful technique. Um, basically just using x-rays to examine the internal anatomy, finding an internal trait that you wouldn't normally observe. Okay. Yeah, it's getting pretty easy. It's actually really, really relaxing. Uh, which one do we want to keep? I really like this one. I can't explain why. It's just, it's just neat. Oh, we've got a new email. 
Clutter here in. I'm focusing on rare Cambrian fossil shells for the next newsletter. Could you please send me a photo of a, a, a one star shell? Okay, so a shell, a shell with one or more rare traits. Okie doke. Um, how do we do that? Use the space bar to take a picture. Okay, uh, so this one's a one star shell. Wait, actually, no, surely I'm going to send them this one. It's not a one star. Oh my god, ridiculous. Okay. Wow, what a, what a picture. <laughs> Amazing. Oh. What's this? Sending you this, assuming you will not read it, because you must be on your way to the airport already. Uh oh. And your cab was delayed, I'm guessing. In case you forgot, we're meeting today at MSP, and from there to Fort Lauderdale, and from there to the Caribbean aboard the good ship Princess Bud. It's cruise time. Waiting at the gate for you, Evelyn. Uh oh. Um, this feels like someone else's problem. I don't... I mean, I'll reply, but like... This seems like this kind of situation I would end up in, missing a flight because I was looking at fossils. Oh my god, that might have actually genuinely happened once. I'm just going through the, like, the Rolodex of my brain real quick. Oh god. Um, anyway, let's just keep looking at shells and ignore that because everything is fine. Ooh, we've got some new uh, uh, traits now as well, so they can have ridges. The kind of ridge shells, I always, maybe this is completely wrong, but I was always taught in my undergrad courses that that meant it was from a more energetic, more turbulent environment, because the ridges uh, gave the shell a little bit more support. And you got these spiny ones. Yeah, see, this is why the colorblind is needed. Oh my god. If I didn't have it on, I'd be like, yep, that's fine. What was the game I complained about, about being really colorblind unfriendly was it i think it was ancestors was the one that really bugged me yeah that's why i've not done any more videos on it recently maybe we should try and get back into that at some point soon easy to start off with uh da -da -da -da. we've got oh this one is the same size so it's gained the uh ridges here that's quite interesting maybe this one maybe over time the environment changes from brown to blue to slightly more further inland where the water's more turbulent and so it evolved the ridges maybe that would be pretty cool that would be my interpretation of it anyway uh this one is the same but it's get it's just changed the aperture and then this one is oh this is also this one it's just gone slightly bigger so oh, that's an end point i completely missed that a version of this would work really well in a museum setting i was just thinking of that like you could easily easily set up like this on a laptop maybe or you could um actually get out some like shells or some 3d printed shells and basically do this exercise with like kids visiting the museum that would work so well i don't know if no are you sure oh wait that's an end point what are you doing concentrate come on people are watching they're expecting you to know what you're doing i don't know which one to keep um big spiky one absolutely amazing Oh, we really need another shelf, don't we? We should get on that and maybe just not look at our emails. Uh, shelf. Shelf. Can we afford the big shelf? Ooh, maybe we should wait one more and then get the big one. Hooray, we got paid. Oh, wait, we got paid for that. Okay, perfect. So we'll go in here. The big one. Uh, yes, please. Oh my gosh, it looks amazing. And obviously, the pride of our collection. That's so cool. Wait, can we... Oh wow, you can actually have like a proper look at it. That's really nice. And so does this mean that it's like, you could theoretically get a really unique one because it's just, you know, there's all the different combinations. That's so cool. And we can rename it as well. Um, the big end. Submit. <laughs> the big end. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, sorry about that. I had to just answer a phone call. I'm going to try and seamlessly edit that together. If I manage, then you will never hear this. If I don't manage, then you just heard this, and I do apologize. And I just noticed that the website... Sorry, I just noticed that the computer says Fossil OS, and I really want Fossil OS now. That sounds great. Um, got a response to the uh, scary email. <laughs> you must be kidding me. Tell me I'm here in Fort Lauderdale. Um, airport is sweating through my damn Hawaiian... Uh, Hawaiian... Hawaiian... Oh. Hawaiian what? Hawaiian what? And you're still at home? Oh, I've really annoyed someone. That's fine. Okie doke. 
what on earth were we doing next? <laughs> we had something to do. Um, oh, it was look at more fossils. To be honest, I think we'll do one more box just to wrap things up and see if... Ooh. Firstly, that is really pretty. We are having that one. No matter what happens, that's cool. Oh, that one's also really cool. Um, but also, look at this thing. A missing link. A fossil is missing. Luckily, you know what color it would have been. Okay, so you know where the missing link goes. So that's okay. That's two. Okay, so this one represents like a hypothetical fossil, I guess. So there's going to be a jump where you're going to see more than one trait change. So we know that this one fit in the middle. Okay, that's again. I took this game for granted earlier. That's really cool. And again, just proves my hypothesis that this would work really, really well in a museum setting. So, well actually, to be honest, this has already been sort of solved because we know that everything is descended from uh, this guy. Next we've got... Ooh, okay, so... This is where it's going to get really fiddly. So this is just this, but with the ridges, so we know that that goes there. And then we've got this thing. So this one cannot be descended from this one. Firstly, I just realized it's an endpoint, so there's no real point in explaining it, but if you look, this one's got a square aperture, circular aperture, and it's got a different pattern. So there needs to be two different things. So I'm pretty sure that one goes there, and then we've got, okay, this is just this one, but bigger, which is amazing. That's actually really cool. This one lost the stripe. This one got, well, no, this one lost. Oh, so this one, Oh, actually, so this one's quite cool. So if you look closely, it's actually the same morphology as this one, which means that it evolved the uh, ridges and then it reverted back to how it looked during the the uh, the teal stage, which that, that's pretty cool. I like that. The rest of these shouldn't be too difficult. We've got this thing. Oh, and we want to keep... Which one was that side I wanted? I actually think I might jump ship to this one. I know I give this one a lot of uh, praise, but there's a bigger one, <laughs> I want the bigger one. Now, part of me wants to keep going because I really, really want to see the trilobites. Okay, so I think we can infer, because this one is definitely not the, the ancestor of either of these two, because it is not ridged and it's too flat. So presumably this one represents a ridged descent, uh, ridged, a ridged ancestor, I should say, of this one with a circular aperture. That's my... That's my prediction there. And then we've got these two, obviously, coming from this guy. Yep, and yep, and... Ah, oh, easy peasy. That one to there, that one to... Hmm. No, because it's triangular and ridged. So these two form a little clade up here. Oh, so neat. We've got one more email. Fossils, you skipped the point of a lifetime for fossils. <laughs> I like to think that my reply is just, yep. Um, I'll keep this one because it looks beautiful. And I think with that, <laughs> we might wrap this up for today. Thank you so much for watching. And yeah, definitely give this game a look if you want to hone your skills at doing um, some basic paleontology lab work, I guess, because... Yeah, this is just really neat. I'm really happy that a game like this exists. I would like to see where it comes next. There is a lot of room on here for extra things down the line. So if you want to add some fish, hit me up because I would love that. That would be amazing. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Goodbye.